playing in the 2009 US Open of beach volleyball. Center court, right under the pier, tons of people watching. Wild. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was a it was a respectable match. Like I think we lost 21-15, 21-16. Okay. So it was close. We were up at a couple switches, so it was I mean, we held our own. You gave them hell. Yep. Yeah. Hey everyone, you're watching the Lively Charleston podcast. Our goal with the show is to interact with and tell the stories of the amazing people, places, and businesses that make Charleston the best city in the world. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. And check us out on Instagram and Facebook where we post content regularly throughout the week. Jonathan Brady, my man, welcome officially to the Lively Charleston podcast, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I see. So you're rocking here. Show the camera. You're rocking the SC Elite Volleyball Tee. So that's a little bit of a hint as to what we're going to be getting into. Uh, But before we get into that... Let's take it back, man. You, uh, you are a good buddy of mine. We are. Uh, we we're just talking about how you're approaching forty. I just crossed forty. Yeah. Um, so we've been friends for a few years now, uh, but we're actually uh, we're actually big rivals uh, in, in a specific, a very specific sort of way. So you grew up in Buffalo, New York. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a great time to be a Bills fan. Yes, it is. Not Finally. such a great time to be a Patriots fan. Oh, you're a Patriots fan? Yeah, we've, I didn't know ar- that. we've argued about this. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it goes years back. You probably intentionally didn't want to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, probably not at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, Josh Allen, man, he's the truth. He is the truth. And he seems to be a really good dude, which is like, it just adds to him being an awesome football player. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it does. I went back when he first came in the league and started lighting it up. I went, I like to go back on people's Instagram and see like before, you know, they were famous and like, you do kind of get some wholesome vibes from him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dude. He fits the, the blue collar Buffalo mentality, which is awesome. hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you guys are, you guys are killing it. And, uh, it turns out, so you grew up in Buffalo, New York, uh, big and sports is a big part of your family. Yes, sir. Yeah. We grew up going to sporting events. Uh, yeah. I mean, we only have hockey and football for professional sports. But we had uh, the Bandits, which is professional lacrosse, which isn't as big, but still cool to go to. We had the Buffalo Blizzards, which was soccer, um, also cool to go to. But, yeah, it's mostly football and hockey, and everyone, like, bleeds that stuff. Yeah, you guys are basically all super fanatics. Yeah, pretty much. For everyone I know who's a Bills fan is, like, a hardcore Bills fan. There's no casual Bills fans. No, there isn't. And the, the interesting thing is, like, I've lived in a couple different cities, like bigger cities, and there's always uh, a contingent of multiple sports fans, whether it be, you know, from all over the country. When you go to Buffalo, it's all Buffalo fans. Like, there's no there's no New England backers bar in Buffalo. Right, right. Every city I've lived in, there's a Bills backers bar because it's just, it's just different. Well, and they, you guys probably don't get too many transplants, right? Like, people that move into Buffalo from somewhere else. No, not many people <laughs> want to go to Buffalo and, and <laughs> endure those winters. Right, right. Yeah, they get pretty cold. How, how cold does it get up there? It gets pretty cold, like sub-zero at times yeah. with the wind chill. Yeah. There was a one one month in particular, I remember, that for the entire month of February, it did not get above freezing. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. So definitely, um, uh, it's definitely a lifestyle. We'll, we'll it is, it yeah, that. and it's, it's a hardening factor for people. Sure. Like people from Buffalo are a little, they can kind of deal with things a little differently. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we grew up in Buffalo. Um, you talked about how a lot of um, a lot of your, you know, now you're, you're a professional coach, mm-hmm. right? but a lot of your, as a, as a child, sports was a big part of just kind of you being competitive. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think um, one of the things I reflect a lot on is the, the friend group that I grew up with. We were all super competitive. And like people always ask, what sports I played growing up. And it was, it was mostly just baseball and volleyball as far as for school or for a club or whatever, but we competed in everything. Like we'd go out and play soccer and we'd play this game called world cup. you would stick someone in goal and then everyone else would have to try to score on that person. And it was like an elimination game. <laughs> we'd play tag, like we'd play manhunt throughout the town and we'd set boundaries that were just like the streets and we'd compete at that. Uh, it was just whatever we did. We went really hard. A lot of a lot of fights, a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, fighting over who won this or that. But it was um, it was really fun to to gain that athleticism of playing multiple sports and being very competitive and learning what it was like to not to basically not want to be the one that wasn't that wasn't picked last. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was. Yeah, it, I think it helped me as an athlete and even as a coach to kind of get that competitive um, fire. And so as you've um, transitioned, you know, from from being a kid into adulthood do you hate to lose now as an adult 
Yeah, I don't want to lose it at anything. And it I, doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, I think there's certain things I know I need to lose, um, whether it's to young younger <laughs> athletes or sure, sure. you know maybe my wife at times. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I th- I think there's something to be said about just taking whatever you're doing serious, and it, it's not it's not necessarily about winning and losing, but giving your all to be good at something. So it's it's not necessarily the wins loss. It's it's the respect from winning. Um, and also like to kind of prove to yourself that the work you're putting in is paying off. Sure. So it's like, it's, especially being an athlete, it's like, you want to know that the time you put in working out, eating right, training, you want to see that success. And sometimes winning is how you equate those two things. So yeah. To know that the work you're putting in, it, it's actually doing something right. Yeah. Cause otherwise what's it for? And sometimes the measuring stick. Well, a lot of times, especially as a kid and with sports, the measuring stick is how you are relative to your peers, right? Correct. Because you'll, like, let's say if you're new to a sport, let's say you're 10 years old mm-hmm. and you just start playing any sport, volleyball, baseball, and there's going to be probably everyone on the team is going to be better than you, right? Yeah. And then you practice, 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 and then you leapfrog a few people. And mm-hmm. maybe now you're the third or fourth worst <laughs> instead of, yeah, you know, the, right. the worst on the team. And yeah. then you're like, oh, wow, look at me getting better. Yeah. And then that you continue with that progression. Um, and that's kind of your measuring stick, right? It's just that yep. competitiveness and, and that relativity to your peers. Yep. I agree hundred percent. And it's cool too, because that translates, have you seen that translate? We'll, we'll get into the business and what you're doing there, but I've seen in business and entrepreneurship and also in sales, mm-hmm. it seems to me there's a pattern of a lot of the best people or the most successful people are former athletes and they take that same mindset into business or into sales. Yep. And I think there, there's a lot to be said and I'll kind of liken it to even people that interview for jobs. If you go in and there's two people and one of them was an athlete, there's stats and I I don't know them off the top of my head, but that suggests that people who were captains or participated in athletics on a team, they usually have an edge above people that didn't play sports when it comes to interviewing for jobs. So I think, yeah, right along that same line is there, there's a lot that can be taken away from sports. That isn't just the wins and losses. It's, it's about the development of the person and being part of a team and learning how to lead. Um, and even learning how to follow at times. Like if you have a captain or a coach that has something, they really need you to follow. Like a directive is you need to learn how to operate as a team and kind of know your role. I think every team, whether it be a, a workplace team or a sports team, everyone on that team has their role. And I think that by being on a team, sometimes you might not be the starter or the the captain or the person that scores all the points, but there's still a role for you on that team, especially in team sports, which, you know, the work environment's a team sport. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And even sometimes, um, you know, having to sacrifice mm-hmm. something, whether it be a personal stat or, yep. like you said, maybe you're not starting today, even though you're, uh, you know, a better player because mm-hmm. it's better for the team. Yeah, one of the quotes I love and I've said probably 100 times this year coaching high school is, uh, it's actually a question I ask my teams is, would you rather have your worst game ever and your team win or have your best game ever and your team lose? That's tough. It's not. It shouldn't be, in my opinion. Yeah. I want my team to win 100 out of a 100 times. Yeah. I mean, it's a great question to ask. It's the only reason I say it's tough is it's such a cool it's such a cool feeling when you like <laughs> when you just have the best day ever and you're just on fire. It is. Right. But it's still like it doesn't overcome that feeling of losing. For me, it doesn't. And yeah. For you, maybe it doesn't. People that are true competitors that want to win, I think there's no debate. That reminds me of uh, Kobe in Game 7 of the Finals against the Celtics. Mm-hmm. I forget what year, 07, 08 maybe. Um, and he, he was trash. He just played terrible <laughs> yeah. that game. I don't know if you remember. but Not really. Uh, but they won. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he was as happy as could be. He couldn't care less. He would have been just as happy won. if he dropped 50 and a triple-double. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, yeah, care. Yeah, yeah they he, won. He's got a ring on his finger and a, and, a, and a trophy. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. All right, so let's go back to um, how'd you get into volleyball in the first place? Kind of interesting story. So I was never really into volleyball. Um, I remember in middle school, I had a coach who he was the varsity girls coach, and he was like, "He's like Brady. He's like you got really good hands. You should you know go off for volleyball." I'm like, eh, I don't really know about volleyball. It's kind of a girly sport. And um, guys always think think that you have to wear spandex. They're like, <laughs> yeah, I probably did think that at the time being like a seventh asking, or eighth grader. Wait, do I have to wear what they wear? I have to do that. Do I uh, fast forward like two or three years? I was a sophomore in high school. So I was I was a, a young sophomore. I was 14 turning 15. So I was always a, a little bit like the youngest in my class. But one of my really good buddies was like, hey, you want to try out for volleyball? I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I don't play a fall sport. 
So we go out, we try out. After the first day of tryouts, he dips. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to do this. I'm like, what, dude? We're, like, we were trying out <laughs> together. And uh, so I was like, I'm going to stick with it. I, at this time, I had this weird mentality of like, I'm never going to quit anything. So I stuck it out. Um, was not good. Was all right because I was, you know, I'm athletic. Um, but stuck it out. Ended up, you know, kind of playing spotty beginning of the year. By the end of the season, six rotation, playing all the way around. Um, and it's something, you know, one of those little moments that I'll never forget is at the, the banquet at the end of the year. The coach, Mr. Kowal, shout shout out to him because he's kind of the first coach I had. He, you know, they they go through every player, what they did, and like you know, just them being part of the team. And he said, "I've never coached anyone that has learned the game faster than I have." And it was a compliment, That's a big compliment but it was yeah. yeah, it was a it was a big deal because this is a guy that had been coaching for a really long time, right? And been around <laughs> around the sport for a long time, and that. It, it definitely stuck with me, and I was like, all right, so maybe there's something here that first year I was like, Dad, I need to play club volleyball. Like, I need to play. Like, this is all I hear about is to get better. You need to play club. I was a relatively unknown, tried out for club, somehow made it. I don't know if the coach just saw something or whatever, but I made it, and I was I was still not that good. I was raw. I hadn't even played for a full year. Um, made that team, and the rest is history, really. That actually is um, – that's a huge testament because volleyball is such a um, – it's such a feel and a touch game. It's such a skill game mm-hmm. where like, like raw speed doesn't do a whole lot for you in volleyball, you know, right. explosiveness. It can help you jump high. Mm-hmm. That's definitely an asset. But if you don't have timing, if you don't have touch, if you don't have control, then it's, it can be kind of a wild, uh, a wild athleticism that, that mm-hmm. could even hurt you more than help you. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think um, one of the things I, I kind of like into that, that aspect is, you grow up learning how to run, throw, catch, and kick. You don't do any of those things in volleyball. <laughs> you don't do that at all. None of them. Like yeah. you said, the, the, I think the word to use is touch. Like you got to have a finesse and a touch and like kind of know what your body's doing at all times because you're trying to connect, you know, a, a short sprint with a jump, with the timing of a set, with the arm swing, which is way – it's different than throwing a ball even. It's very similar but very different. Um, so it's just not something – a lot of people grow up learning how to do that skill set, those skill sets. For sure, for sure. Um, I actually have a similar story. I started playing sophomore year um, to meet girls purely. I got the same <laughs> invite from a buddy, and uh, they would scrimmage against the girls. And, right. like, there were a couple guys who were, like, really good. And I was like, all right, like, this is this is cool. I, I had no game, so I'm like, this, <laughs> you know, this yeah. is my hit, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> funny story, actually, 20 years later, I met my girlfriend, or we didn't meet, but we connected through through volleyball uh so it worked it was a long play but it, it, it did end up working out um but uh i forget what my point of that was anyway how you got into volleyball yeah yeah exactly that's how we get into volleyball but um <clears throat> similar sort of thing I, I remember um being the worst player on the team and just and it sucked it was just it was awful everybody could jump high and spike except for me yeah and i'm just like railing balls into the bleachers every time <laughs> i tried and it was horrible but uh, uh once you get the touch it's, yeah. a, it's a cool it's it's i think it's it's probably the funnest game in the world um, it really is. once you get a feel for it yeah it's different it's interesting like parents that have never been around it and they see it at a high level and they're like oh my god this is this is really fun to watch mm-hmm. like going to a division one like cfc game it's people that have never seen it played at that pace and at that intensity and at that level they're always really thrown back and really surprised and always like i didn't know it was like this i'm like yeah it's pretty intense yeah, at like high it's, level. it's not like physical like body on body physical but i mean you're you're gonna get hit in the face sometimes yep. and the ball's coming at you pretty fast so yep. you gotta know what you're doing absolutely um awesome man okay so let's get into we got a little backstory let's get mm-hmm. into what you are doing now so you moved to charleston four years ago yes sir with the intention of doing what starting a volleyball club for junior athletes all right, and how has that been going? It's been awesome. We're we're heading into season four. Um, every year we've grown both um, both quantity and quality as far as the the number of players we have and the quality of players we have. Um, and I set out a, a very specific goal of um, you know just getting our foot in the door. Um, I want to be competitive in the Charleston area. Then I'd like to be competitive in the greater Charleston area, and then within the state then within the region, then within the country. So we're, we're progressing along. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a, a lengthy process. This isn't like a two or three year plan. It's like a five, 10 year plan 
to get to that point, but we're I think we're trending in the right direction. We we've been on a a, a positive trend, if you will. So we're just gonna continue doing what we're doing, and you know, hope for the best. That's awesome, man. So um, you have so take it back a little bit. You what's your program about? Who do you who do you coach? Who who um let's start with that. Who do you coach? Yeah. Who's the right people for, I guess, for your program? Yeah. So I, I think anyone that wants to get involved with, vol- with volleyball, really, um, we offer um, club teams from 12 to 18 year olds. Um, and that's both boys and girls now. So awesome. boys, we had our first boys team last year. Boys volleyball just this year was sanctioned as a high school sport, which is phenomenal. That is awesome. Literally I didn't even know that. first year. That's huge. Which is crazy because we're in 2022 and like almost everywhere else in the country has boys volleyball. So we're a little behind in that regard, but uh, U12 to U18, we also have, um, with the U12, you're allowed to be younger and play up. So, you know, girls that are 10 or 11 can also play on the U12 team. Um, we're also bringing back our academy program, which is geared towards beginners um, between the ages of like six and 12. Um, that'd be our level one. Level two would be if you're older than 12 and maybe don't want to travel or maybe you didn't make a team and you want to sharpen your skills, our academy program is basically built for those that aren't on club, don't want to play club, or are okay. beginners to the sport, and that's both boys and girls. Um, so, yeah, it's, we, we have a very qualified coaching staff. A lot of our coaches have either played in college, coached in college, or have been part of volleyball for you know, 20, 30 years. So we have, I think, literally at this point, hundreds of years of experience in volleyball on our coaching staff. Um, another aspect that we do is we really help the girls with recruiting. If they get to that point, whether they, you know, if they want to play huge. in college. Yep. Um, so basically that starts around U15s and goes up to U18s. We had four girls go to college and play this past year from our U18s team. So That's that was awesome. really cool. Yeah. Um, and then we, we also help them with like weightlifting and stuff like that. We have a guy that we work with. Um, shout out to Can't Stop Training and Davon Gilliard. He does an awesome job with our girls. Um, getting them ready and getting them, you know, where they need to be for the beginning of the season and build that strength and speed. And he does a lot with like learning how to jump, how to land and the the technical aspects that come along with a lot of that stuff. That's huge, man. What about, um, let me ask this selfishly. Do you have like adult pickup uh, leagues, anything like that? So great question. We will. We're, um, so we just, uh, we're going to be one of two volleyball clubs in the area that has their own facility. So we're going to have a three court facility that we will be running way more programming out of. We were kind of that awesome. Um, last the last three years, our first three years, we had to rent a facility, and uh, it wasn't that conducive to volleyball. The ceilings were really low. It was just not a not a great spot. But we had to get our start somewhere. Um, this year, we were able to get our own place. So it's it's basically a volleyball home for us for the next at least three years, with the option for three more, so six years. Um, that being said, we're going to do um, a, a co-ed adult league, probably fours. Um, it's much easier to get a group of four than it is six sometimes. So we're going to do a co-ed fours league. We're going to offer lessons. Um, we're going to do drop-ins for just open play. Um, like open gym style? Oh, yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah, so we'll do all that stuff. So there'll be a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot more opportunities for both juniors and adult volleyball, which adult is kind of lacking right now. Sure. So we're, we're hoping to really bring in a bigger crowd of adult volleyball players. Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, we will get into, if you are watching <clears> – and you want to get some cardio in, um, but you don't like traditional cardio, we will get into how volleyball can help you. Yep. More to come on that. Okay, let's talk about um, some of your top achievements, personal and professional achievements. What are you most proud of? Um, let's, let's take it from... Let's go anywhere you want with that. What are you most proud of? Just some of the things that... That you've achieved. Well, I'll break it down into player and coach. Okay. How about that? Yeah, let's do that. So player, I would say playing in the 2009 U.S. Open of beach volleyball. So um, only 32 teams in the country qualified for that tournament at the time. Um, I had to win a tournament to get into that tournament. And it was a, it was a local uh, Rochester tournament, actually, just outside of Buffalo. Pretty good beach volleyball in that area. It doesn't seem like there'd be good beach volleyball in Buffalo, but uh, Western New York in general, Buffalo, Rochester, there's been some really good players that came out of that that have come out of that area. Um, so it was a pretty big tournament I played in. I played with one of my buddies from back there. We won the tournament, paid for us to go, the travel, rental car, you know, hotel, the whole deal awesome. was all covered. So um, playing in Manhattan Beach, California, 
was like a dream come true. That's the Mecca. That, that, that is the Mecca, that's right? Where that's where, all where it all started. Play. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, we, we went out there and I, I told my partner at the time, I was like, I don't want to play this number one team. It was uh, Adam Roberts and Mike DePiro. And I didn't want to play my buddies that I was training with from Florida. Turns out first game, we were the last seed because we were probably arguably the worst team there. Uh, we played the one seed, which was DePiro and Roberts. But it was cool because we were the first match of the day right under the pier, center court. So wow. my first Hermosa experience, or Manhattan Beach, sorry, was center court, right under the pier, tons of people watching. Wild. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was a it was a respectable match. Like, I think we lost 21-15, 21-16. Okay. So it was close. We were up at a couple switches. So it was, I mean, we held our own. You gave them hell. Yep. Yeah. But we ended up losing that. It was a double limb tournament. Um, so we ended up playing... My buddies from Florida. The second the two match. teams you don't want to play. The two, the teams two teams I play. and it, it wasn't honestly for any other reason than like I just want I didn't want to play the one seed for obvious reasons or sure. the one seed and then I just didn't want to play the my buddy who I train and play against all the time from Florida. He happened to I think they lost their first match or second match and we ended up playing them in the the contenders bracket and I was like they knocked us out and it was like, uh. like yeah but um so for playing wise I'd say beach that's probably cool my top achievement indoor. We took a third in A for men's at Adult Nationals indoor. So we, we won a medal, which was oh, wow. pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, the, the, you only get medals for first, second, and third. We took third. Um, so we got a bronze for that. I, I cannot remember the year of that, but it was in, where were we when we won? Phoenix, we're okay. in Phoenix. Yeah, okay. Phoenix Adult Nationals indoor. That's a big um, deal. There's a lot of a lot of high level. I mean, collegiate players that show up for for these national tournaments. So it's huge. That's a big deal. Yeah, it, there were probably I think in that division that year there were over thirty teams from all over the country. Wow. Yeah, and we took third. It was awesome. Nicely done. So for indoor, that was good. Indoor as a junior, um, as a sixteen year old, my team won East Coast Championships. We were the number eight, eight number eight ranked team in the nation. For all boys in the entire nation, wow. we're ranked eighth, yeah. All right. So for, for juniors, that was probably my biggest achievement was we won every tournament we played in up until nationals, and we won East Coast Championship, which is like the culminating tournament on the East Coast, basically. It's a big qualifier. Um, we won that, and that was, I mean, that was huge at the time. You still have, um, you still keep in touch with a lot of these guys, have memories with these guys? Yeah, a couple of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a couple of them we still chat once in a while. Um, like two or three of them I was really close with, like played a bunch of beach with. A um, couple of them I played high school with, so there's that. You know, we've we've known each other for a really long time. Yeah. But that team was, I mean, we had there were three or four guys that went on to play D1. Uh, that team was extraordinary. So Love, fun. It. Yeah. Love it. Love uh, it. All right. What about personally? Personally, to be honest, man, just starting a business. It was. I mean, you know, it's a lot to undertake, and I did it from scratch by myself. So no, no loans, no. No advisor, no nothing. It was literally figure it out, legal Zoom, figure it out, this and that, you know, doing all the steps to make sure you're you're getting your LLC all situated and yep. figuring out how you want your built your your business to be built, you know, what what's the foundation look like and just going through that process. And then I'd say, you know, getting married and uh having a kid on the way. That's a, Hot that's damn. a yeah, it's a pretty big accomplishment. You're gonna so. be a dad. Yes, sir. Uh, and I just found out about this about an hour ago. Yes, sir. Uh, which is uh, so congratulations, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. That is, uh, I wish we had beers here. We just, yeah, yeah. It's not 10 o'clock yet. Yeah. So I, don't know, I don't know how that works. Somewhere it is. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, if you decided on the name, you're probably not announcing the name. Not going to announce it. Now. Not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. Could we get an exclusive? I'll name give you an release? exclusive okay, after right. off air. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then um, when uh, when's Lauren do? March 8th is the date, so okay. you know, as you know, being right. a dad, you know, might be a little before that, might be a little yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. So we'll Claire see. was March 11th, so oh, okay. right in the window, right in nice, the window. Yeah. It's a great time. You got a little yeah. time after Christmas, you yep. know what I mean? There's a little gap in there, so that's a good month. That's yeah. a good month there. Um, awesome. So fun fact that not many people know, we're, we're going to move into, um, we got a couple more things to cover here in the, in the last few minutes. Fun fact, not many people know about you is that you rode your bike, as in your bicycle, from Buffalo, New York to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Is is this confirmed? This is confirmed, yes. That is confirmed insane. What <laughs> led you to do that? So first of all, there's a lot more people that do it than you think. <laughs> um, 
honestly, it was just one of my buddies, like the guy that was the best man in my wedding. Um, he asked me to do it. He had a buddy in college that they, they had planned to do it, but his buddy graduated early and he was like, yeah, dude, I can't wait for you to graduate. So he kind of, kind of threw him on there, but he asked me and I was like, ah, let me think about that. That's, that's a pretty big undertaking. Um, but yeah, I was just like, yeah, let's do it. So, and you just hopped on your bike, backpack, water bottle. Let's go to Wyoming. Pretty much. I mean, we, <laughs> you know, it was a, a little bit of a preparation. We, I had to work like three jobs for multiple months to save enough money to buy a bike, buy a tent, buy a ba sleeping bag. Yeah. And, you know, we had bike trailers. So all our gear, all our food and all our clothes and all our stuff was on our bike trailers. We each had one that we pulled. Um, so, yeah, we, we roughed it. How know. long did it take you? We were on the road for 45 days. And like I'd say out of the 45, we spent five of them in a hotel room. So That's the rest was tent and, you know, out there with nature. campsites. Yeah, it was out awesome. Out there with nature, especially in bear country. I mean, some, some of those, you get into Wyoming. Yeah, Colorado, Dude, I, Wyoming, it was wild. I spent an hour on the Peloton and my ass hurts for a week. I mean, 45 oh, yeah. days of riding. It, you crazy. get used to it. The first, like, week and a half was brutal. Like, my legs and butt were destroyed to the point where, like, you're sleeping in a tent on a foam pad that, like, when your legs just touch the ground, they're just sore. But oh, after that. about a week and a half, you were, it was gone. That's an adventure for young people. Yeah, I was 26 -ish. Really? Yeah, it was a while ago. Would you do it again? Yes. You would? 100%. Really? Yeah, I think everyone should do it. Right, cross country biking trip. Add that to your bucket list, yep. folks. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. At Lively Charleston, not only do we love talking about all the amazing things there are to see and do in our awesome city, but we also love helping our clients buy, sell, and invest in Charleston real estate. If you would like to learn more about the Charleston real estate market, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. We'd be more than happy to help you strategize and create a game plan that will be sure to help you hit your real estate goals. And now back to the video. We, this is new. This is the first time. Cool. Okay. I love first times. How do you feel about a pop quiz? Love it. You want to do it? We're going to do a volleyball pop quiz. Oh boy. Are your, are your girls going to be watching this? You think they're going to see this episode? I think some of them watch parents yeah. probably more so, but okay. yeah, I think some will, will probably watch so, it. There's a little pressure here. All right. We're going to see yeah. what you know about the history of volleyball. You up for this? Yep. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Pop quiz. Question number one. What was volleyball's original name before it was called volleyball? Is it volleyball? I feel like we need like the, the Jeopardy music yeah. right now to give you a little time to think. So volleyball, actually a really fun sport too. I'm sure you've played volleyball yeah. before, like in the racquetball courts. That's not it, is it? That's not it. That's oh, not it. It was originally called Mintinet. Did not know that. Me neither. Me neither. Found that out this morning, putting the <laughs> pop quiz together. Mintinet, because it was similar to um, like badminton. Okay. And then there's another guy who called it volleyball. Changed the name. Anyways. Question number two, what country invented volleyball? Uh, United States. United States. Ding, yep. ding. You're right about that one. I didn't know that. I don't know why I assumed it was a European invention. Yeah. I mean, most things are. Yeah. Most of the games, right? Yeah. But we invented basketball too, didn't we? Or uh, no? Sounds right. I have no idea. I, thought I could be wrong I'm not about a basketball that. guy, so. All right. All right. Next, what activity was volleyball created in order to avoid? In order to avoid repeat the question repeating the question what activity was volleyball created in order to avoid i have no idea super interesting one running huh the guy who created it he wanted to avoid running genius <laughs> i love this man i mean maybe that's <laughs> why most volleyball players hate running yeah. and that he found his people you know yeah. by creating yeah. this game, yeah. right that's um, hilarious. So back to our point from about 15 <laughs> minutes ago. If you don't like cardio and you don't like running, like probably myself, although you like cross-country bike trips, which is also. Riding bikes so much easier than running. Yeah. Not to Wyoming from New York. <laughs> but all right, fair. Another <laughs> conversation. Uh, so anyways, great cardio in volleyball. So come learn how to play. Take a, Are you going to do adult skills? Yes, sessions, I want to. I, I do. That? That's something we've we've talked about and I would like to offer adult lessons. Be so, I, yeah, I, can, I don't think there's anyone that does it like so. legitimately. Um, so yeah, I think there's a need for it. So yeah, we plan on doing it. I'll yeah. bring tons of people if you offer that. Yeah, we will. The only sure. way to learn right now is to go sign up for the B league at Santee's and just like figure it out. Yeah. You no, know? I got you. Um, all right, cool. Uh, last question. 
This is a fun one. What year was the three hit rule implemented? Nineteen seventy six. Um, not no. Nineteen twenty. <laughs> oh my god! I was gonna say close, but it wasn't. That's that not close. even close. But did you even know? Here's what I learned. I didn't know that there was never that at one point there wasn't a three hit rule. I didn't know that. How that's funny. wild. So just however many it took to get it over. So what what strategic changes would you make if there was no three hit rule? Like you can hit it as many times as you want. I think that's how it was originally played. I think you just keep passing or setting the ball until it's perfect. Until you get the perfect yeah. one, right? So like you imagine pass, set, the hitter's approaching to hit, but if it's not perfect, no, they no, end no, up doing yeah. a jump set back to the yeah, middle, yeah. right? Or and just pass it back. No, that one's not good. Again. Give me another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep going. Yeah. You keep running the quick until you yeah. wear the defense yeah. up. Yeah. How fun would that be? That'd be interesting. Now, here's something. Since you're in charge of a volleyball club, this would be very interesting. So, are you much of a poker player? Do you play poker? I love poker. You love poker? Oh. Love Hell yeah. Poker. Okay, what's your favorite game? Texas Hold'em. Okay, fair. Have you ever played Pineapple? I have, but you'd have to remind me of the rules. I've, I've heard of it, and I think I've played it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. All good. So, it's the same as Texas Hold'em, except you have three cards. Gotcha. Yeah, right? I've played it, yeah. And then there's two versions. There's one version where you get three and you give one back. And there's okay. one version where you keep all three okay. and you can use any two. Like that. Right. So all the same fundamentals of the game are still in place. The rules of the game are the, are the same. Mm -hmm. But there's some slight strategic adjustments you have to make right. in order to win this game versus the other one, right? Yeah. Um, how fun would it be to have, like, a random tournament where you get, like, five touches? That'd be or cool. You just, like, switch it up and it's just, like, all your skills still translate. But, like, who can adjust to this strategic yeah. change? Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. I've never seen or heard of anything like that. I've No, never. The, and there's a, a slight difference indoor-outdoor. Like, indoor, you're allowed block plus three. Right. Outdoor, right, right, right. block plus two. So there is a slight variation there that's a little different. But, yeah, that'd be five-touch. People would be freaking out. Yeah, it'd be so weird. Yeah, nobody would know what to do. And every, everyone would kind of interpret it in their own way. I feel like you'd have to make it where you have to use five contacts. Oh, like you can't send it over you early. You can't send it over before the fifth contact. A must, a must use. Yeah. A must use five. See, that'd be fun. I've, that would be fun. Like I'd kind of in, uh, in Potlum in Omaha, like you have to use two cards. Right. Yeah, exactly. That would be fun. It's gimmicky, but like it'd yeah, be yeah. a good time. Yeah. All right. Thank you for playing our first ever pop <laughs> quiz right here on the Lively Charleston podcast. Um, yeah. Three hit rule in 1920. I thought that was pretty interesting. All right. So let's take it back to what you guys are doing. Um, you talked about, so, so your, when you were growing up, your, your dad had a, he had a big impact on you. Um, you mentioned when we were off air that he's a, one of the hardest working people, you know, so how did that translate into your work ethic now? And maybe more importantly, some of the things that you're teaching the kids that you're working with. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is there's always more you can do. Like, even when my dad was working a full-time job, 40 hours a week, sometimes more, um, <clears throat> he was always working multiple side jobs. And, like, if he didn't, you know, if we didn't have something or, like, for, you know, for him paying for club volleyball, it was like he would do extra work. And it was like, how much time can this guy find to do more work? So when I say work, it's both, like, a job, but also, like, when you're training for a sport or, or training for school, sometimes I think we we think we're utilizing our time and doing all we can. But I ask the girls sometimes, like, how much were you on your phone this week? They're like, nah, I don't want to play that game. I'm like, how much were you on your phone? 20 hours. For a week? That's actually not even that high. That's not even week. that high, right? Yeah. I'm lowballing there. Yeah. So it's like, that's almost a whole day that you didn't utilize your time. So, like, that's one of the biggest things is, like, there's always, you could always be doing more. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is just, like, to, it's like a perseverance thing is like we, you know, my parents were divorced, so we didn't have a ton of money. Um, but it was like, my dad always found a way and just to persevere through, you know, the good times, the bad times, whatever it was. Um, so yeah, that really, that resonated with me a lot. And the other thing was I'm way more of, I, I get way more joy out of giving than receiving when it comes to like gifts or, or whatever it is. And that was my dad. Like, give you the last penny in his pocket, the shirt off his back. And like, he always, he was always content just like being there and doing stuff for people. And he never asks for anything yeah. like whether it's his birthday, Christmas, 
he's like, John, don't worry about it. Like whatever. And I still try to like, try to find the guy something, but it, it, he just never ending, just give. And like, I really, I took that, you know, into coaching a lot. And it's like, I just, I, I try to pour my heart and soul into it and just give, give, give. And it's like when that light bulb moment happens and the kids get it or whatever it is you're working on, it's like, there's no greater feeling in my opinion yeah. Um, than that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. I can imagine that's super fulfilling. To yeah, work extremely. with someone, work with someone, and then they have that breakthrough and experience that excitement mm -hmm. through them that you yep. at one point, you know, you felt that click and yeah. you know, now you're helping somebody else do it. Yeah, it's amazing. There's, I, I personally think, and you, you know, as a father, I'm sure feel that all the time with your mm -hmm. kid is like, you know, it's one of the things I'm looking forward to of being a dad yeah. are those moments with my child yeah. that I get, that I, you know, I get to experience a lot of them with coaching, which, which is awesome. Um, but I think, you know, with your kid, it's obviously a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so hypothetical question for you. Of course, this would never happen because your kid's going to be awesome at volleyball. But say you're coaching the team. Let's say you're coaching the team. Um, you got six players better than your son. Does he does he get on the team? Does he get a spot on the team? Or are you sitting him and, and making him? Uh, he doesn't start. Six? He's not starting. No. Not a oh, chance. No, right. I think that's another lesson taking away from being a volleyball coach and director is that I want to think that I'll be completely objective with my child when it comes to their abilities as an athlete, whether it be volleyball, baseball, whatever they decide to do. Um, Cause you see a lot of parents that aren't like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really hard sometimes to have that conversation, whether with the parents or the kids themselves when they need, you know, they're, they, they're working hard to be on the starting six or whatever it is, and they might just not be there yet. That's a difficult conversation to have. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be especially difficult once again with your own kid. But I think that through coaching, I've learned how to approach that and, and the advice to give them on what they will need to do to get better. You know, being a volleyball coach, if it's volleyball, I can certainly um, guide them in the right direction. Hey, you need to work on your platform. Hey, you need to get a little stronger. Hey, you need to work on your, your vertical jump, whatever it is. Um, so with volleyball, I'll be able to really, you know, like I said, guide that process, but yeah, I, I they don't get a spot. You, you that's earned. You got to earn it, right? Yeah. You got to earn it. It's funny. I was having a conversation a couple weeks ago with, um, with, uh, Claire's volleyball coach who, again, she's, she's eight and nine. You haven't launched that program yet. Yeah. Um, but, and I could see him, uh, very uncomfortably dancing around telling me that she's not good enough to make their, cause they have a, a, like a travel team. team. Yeah. Yep. I think they do five tournaments for, you know, for mm -hmm. the year. And you know, I, he squirmed a little bit and then I was yeah. like, Hey, look, listen, if she's not good enough, she doesn't play. Like yeah. I get it. It's yeah. fine. Um, you know, just be direct with me and then tell me, you know, what does she need to work on? Right. You know, how do we get there? Yeah. That's it, it's good. I, I'm not going to like let you up for my kid, you know, yeah. not being on the level. Some parents can't handle that. I'm sure. I'm sure that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And here's, here's something. Um, I don't know if this would apply to what you do. Maybe it would, but, um, I use this a lot with my clients when we first start, uh, the process of, of buying or selling a house, or I do some consulting too with business owners and I'll ask them at the very beginning of our relationship, when we, when a, a difficult conversation has to happen, where there's something that perhaps you need to do better, mm -hmm. how direct would you like me to be with you? That's good. How direct and honest, let's say on a scale from one to 10. Yep. Guess what everybody says? 10. Everybody says 10. Even the sensitive people say 10. Yep. Right. But then what it allows me to do is reference back to that once the conversation happens. Right. Right. Like say, hey, Jonathan, do you remember at the beginning of our conversation when we first met, I asked you one to 10, how direct and honest you'd like me to be with you. You said 10. Is that still the case? You say yes. And then you've basically given me permission yep. to now be to just say what it is and get it out there. Yep. And then let's talk about next steps. I don't know if that'd be helpful with parents, maybe in the very beginning of the season. Uh um, yeah, it's part of the process. I think yeah. it's one of the things I enjoy with with both learning learning the players and the parents, the social aspect of understanding who they are and what you can and can't say. Like some kids like to be yelled at, some kids like to be pushed hard, some kids, you know, there's a different approach for everyone. Yeah. And that applies to parents as well. Like some parents I can be very direct with, some parents I have to kind of walk around things and be a little more sensitive, which is I enjoy figuring that out. Um yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing for sure. I think, and to your point too, I think um, that really highlights the difference between a good coach and a great coach. I've seen this in multiple sports where like a good coach can take an athlete who aligns with their methods and their coaching style and if they have potential and they can turn them into a great athlete. Mm -hmm. 
But a great coach can take any athlete, even if they don't necessarily align with the coach's default style. Like you said, some kids need a harder push. Some kids need a hug, right, when mm-hmm. they're having a tough day. Yeah, right? 100%. And, and the coach's ability to adapt, I think, is what makes is the difference between a good coach and a great coach. Yeah, I think you you can't be so stuck in your ways that it's just this is the way it's going to be and that's it because we all we all learn differently we all need different things like you know like you said some people need to be hugged some people need to be yelled at like some people are just different so to have a it's not a one size fits all from a coaching perspective and you have to be able to not only identify what those athletes need and be you know be pretty good at at knowing that but also like like you said maybe asking them which I, I've done a lot of like hey we have like questionnaires sometimes at the beginning of the year for if you're on my team for the first time is like how do you how do you handle this 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 and this to understand better That's where great. they're coming from yeah. yep um, so yeah it's it's a process for sure absolutely um, awesome so what makes um, you know there's a few different volleyball basically any city you go there's gonna be a couple different volleyball clubs so yeah. what makes your guys's different what makes your culture different well i think culture itself is different okay. it's not even that our culture is different i think well yeah it is the culture is different but it, it's just it's more of a family vibe um it's more like i i always say when uh when there's a new athlete or, or new new kid that joins or, or new family I, I say welcome to the sc elite family because that's the feel we want right um i think the other thing as far as from a physical standpoint is we we offer like the weightlifting and stuff like that with our kids um that's not something some kids do it on their own at at the other clubs but it's not a club-wide thing um we don't we don't necessarily have multiple teams at at the same age group so we're we basically have one team at each age um that may change a little bit this year but it affords us the opportunity to give everyone the same thing um and that's something i set out to do from from day one was it wasn't going to be like hey we're only going to we're only going to give the best training to our top kids or, our, or, you know, our ones teams or whatever. It's like everyone's going to get the same training. One of the things we also do a little differently is we have um, skill sessions where we break down um, our practices into skill position practices for a, uh, the beginning part of the year where all the setters will go with the setter training. All the outside hitters cool. will go. Yep. And we do that for every position. And we did that, I think, last year for the first about six weeks of the season. And we coupled that with our weightlifting. Um, and it was a really new, unique experience, and I, I don't think a lot of kids get that skill-specific training from, you know, girls or guys that played Division One, played at a high level, are from areas of the country that where volleyball's a little bit bigger, a little bit better. So we do that. We also bring in a lot of outside coaches for camps and clinics and stuff. That's just maybe saying the same thing a little differently. And it's, you know, you... You know this, uh, like you can't just have one coach saying the same thing over and over. Just like we talked about with the personalities is sometimes it just doesn't click. So you can come in and coach, even though like you're not a volleyball guy, you might be able to come in and coach a kid and you might just say something a little differently that just clicks for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we, we bring in, I have a, between all the coaches within our club, we have a pretty big network of coaches around not only the area, but the country. So, like, I'm actively always trying to get uh, guys and girls I know from different parts of the country to come down and coach and do camps and clinics. And I think that's been a huge differentiator as well. That's huge. That's huge. You're exactly right. Sometimes the same message, just articulated differently Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I remember being when uh, when I had a gym and I was a trainer, there was a, a guy I had with me for about a year and I was trying to get him to make this adjustment in the way he squats and I, I swear we had this conversation a hundred times and I tried every metaphor, every different um, cue using physical cues, like literally guiding him in the, in how I wanted him to go. And then we go, we went to this like CrossFit competition one time and he's all excited. He runs up to me. He's like, dude, check it out. And he does like a perfect squat. And I'm like, he's like, so-and-so just told me to do this. And I'm like, I told you that a thousand yeah. times. And he's like, yeah, but you didn't say it like this. <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. But it worked. Yeah. It clicked. And yeah. then, you know, and then he had a perfect squat. That's it right there. Yeah. Just a, a literally could it be one different word. Yeah, absolutely. That's huge. That's huge. Um, okay. So, so a big part of, I, I guess when you talk about moving back to, you guys have a family culture. So, and you're obviously personally invested in all of your athletes. And um, it sounds like you have a relationship with the athlete, with the, with their parents and yep. um, especially you guys are traveling and you know, there's a lot of time spent. Yeah. It's a lot of time for sure. Uh, I think 
that highlights uh, another differentiator that I think is very important is that I'm the face of the organization and you see me and you get me like whether it's calls, texts, emails, I'm always available. This is basically my full-time job. So I coach high school and I run the club and coach the club. That's pretty much all I do. So I think that's a, a, a big difference when, you know, whether it's a club here or outside the country, there, there's a lot of clubs around the country that are owned by people or, or even operated as a director by people who maybe don't have a sports background or a volleyball background and don't really understand all of those little nuanced things that go into, you know, coaching and traveling and registering for tournaments or just being the face of the organization and saying, hey, I have an issue. Who do I talk to? And sometimes those people aren't available. Sometimes those people don't even live in that area and they're they're managing the club from somewhere else. I'm here. I'm, I give my cell phone number out to every single team, every parent. I take calls almost daily. And parents are always like, I'm so sorry for bothering I say, you're not bothering me. I, by the end of this conversation, you will want to get off the phone with me because I will talk volleyball until I'm blue in the face. Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's, you're, not, you're not putting me out at all. Um, so I think that's a big difference. Is even, even if the people aren't volleyball people, a lot of times they have other full-time jobs. So you know, full-time job is a 40, sometimes 60-hour work week. People are doing a lot outside of running a club. I, that is my 40-hour work week. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. That's what I do full-time. So I think that's a big difference as well is that I'm able to devote all of my time and effort towards this thing that I want to be the best possible. And that's, uh, I mean, that's going to be a competitive differentiator for, yep. you know, your business and your club uh, and also your athletes, you know, mm -hmm. in their improvement too. So uh, that's huge, man. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So if uh, anybody watching, if they want to learn more about you, Jonathan Brady, or if yep. they want to learn more about your club, where should they go? Yeah. Website uh, and social media pages. So websites, sceletevolleyball.com. Um, and then you could super easy search on Instagram, Facebook, just SC Elite Volleyball or S, I think Instagram is SC Elite V Ball. Um, but yeah, super easy finds. Uh, whenever we put out any new information, it almost goes out to um, Instagram and Facebook first, and then we'll add it to our website. I'll be honest, saying our website is kind of like the last to get some of that stuff just because so many of the kids and the parents are on the social media. It's just sometimes it's hard to go to a website, find what you need. So we just any camps, clinics, um, new programming, a lot of that stuff is Instagram, Facebook first. Um, or you can, if you do go to our website, my, my number's on there. You can certainly call or text me or email the club, sceletevolleyball at gmail.com. Um, and I'm probably within an hour responsive to almost all of those forms of contact. And if you call me and I don't get it, I will certainly call you back probably pretty quick. Beautiful. Okay. There we go. So that's how they can get a hold of you. Uh, last two questions. Yep. If you could go back in time to, let's say, either when you first started your club or when you first started volleyball, you pick, and give little Jonathan, I guess you weren't little Jonathan when you started <laughs> your business, but um, young Jonathan, a piece of advice, what would that be? So as a player, I'll do both. I'll do as a player and a, let's a do business it. owner. Uh, as a player, I would have I worked a lot harder. Like even looking back, I'm like, yeah, I worked pretty hard because I, I, I loved it but I still could have worked way harder. And that goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. It's like, you always do more. Yeah. And even though I did a lot, and at the time I felt like I did a lot, looking back at it, I could have done way more. Um, so that's that's player. Business-wise, um, it's a really, really interesting one. I think I'm not, I asked a lot of questions. So like, I want to say I would have asked for more help, but I asked a ton of questions of people that have already started businesses and tried to figure out what I could avoid. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Hey, that's right. Maybe, maybe that just means that you, you're really happy with the path that you took and you, you think you went about everything the right way, the way you're supposed to. Yeah. And that's, that's tough because I don't want it to sound like everything's perfect. Cause there were, there were obviously bumps, but like, I think, I think that's where you grow is, you know, if it was just like no issues, no, I mean, we dealt with COVID stuff and all that. It's like, maybe, maybe be more patient because I, I, I definitely, I think I was worried about what everyone else was doing around us as far as volleyball goes. So I think I would have told myself to focus more on from the beginning. Cause now we're at a point where like, I don't have time to worry about what, what everyone else is doing. But at the beginning I was, I was really concerned with 
maybe what people thought of us and sure. that was a a difficult thing maybe for my psyche a little bit being a competitor and, and having been relatively successful as a player and you know coaching at a high level and, and doing all those things um i think i kind of expected it to to launch really fast so if anything maybe just for my own psyche was just being more patient and being like hey this is going to be a process it's not going to be an overnight thing and now it's a lot easier to, to feel that way but i think at the time I, I stressed out maybe a little bit um over it not being what i thought it could be right out of the gate but that's just it's a business right like you got to start somewhere it's great advice it's great advice I, th I think probably for um anybody in business because it's uh it's a very tempting thing you know to look out of your lane and just see see what they're doing right and then um it can be it can definitely be a, a spin cycle to try to be you know reactive yeah. to what everyone else is doing yeah so i think it's great advice uh okay so if somebody's watching this uh they're inspired by you and 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 what you're doing maybe they want to start their own club maybe not a uh maybe not a competitor to you that's maybe it's right. a tennis club baseball maybe it is a volleyball club. yeah that's fine um what advice would you give to them yeah that's a great question i, I think one you just got to go for it because there, i feel like there's so many people that I talk to personally or that you hear the stories of like, yeah, I had this idea for a business, but I just, I didn't want to quit my job. And I financially wasn't sure. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like biking cross country. You can't dwell on it. It's like either you're going to do it or you're not. And it's like, I think just go for it. So just do it. And then I would say, like I just said, ask tons of questions, do your research, um, make sure you, you do all the little things. Um, yeah, I think, I think those are the biggest ones. I mean, you just got to go for it. I mean, you you know, once again, you know what it's like, and it's it's not always going to be glamorous, and it's it's not glamorous. But I, you know, I tell everyone, it's like I, I feel like I don't really work. I, I coach volleyball, and the kids are always like, "Why are you so happy all the time?" I'm like, what do you mean? I'm here coaching volleyball. I'm in the gym, bouncing a ball around, like hanging out, just doing the thing I love to do. It's like, well, how could I not be happy, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's like if you're passionate about starting a business and you. You feel comfortable working for yourself and you're, you're that type of personality that wants to be in that that position i think go for it and just be patient and you know once again referencing the do as much as you can there's always more that can be done there's always something you know there's you know that old adage of, of sports like there's always gonna be someone that's working harder than you so try to be that person great advice great advice and that's um yeah to your point man, it, it it's hard to you just got to go for it and as long as it's in that passion, it's something that you're really passionate about. That grind is manageable, mm -hmm. right? It's you got to embrace that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I think people think there's like a secret formula, and and I w I could say I was probably guilty of that. It's like you know, in asking tons of people questions, like what do I got to do to be successful? It's like you just got to do it, and like there's gonna be good times and bad times, and you have to learn from those bad times and embrace the good times and just just roll with it. Yeah. 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 Keep putting the work in, and then yeah. uh, in 10 years, you'll be an overnight success. That's what you want, right? That's how it works. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, man, this has been a pleasure. Yeah. Um, it's awesome that we were uh, finally able to get you on here. Yeah, thank and you. And congrats on all your success. Thank you. And uh, let's keep playing some volleyball. Keep me posted when the uh, adult I absolutely uh, and, will. and the pickup starts. Yeah, we'll get it going. Right on. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, thank you. Hey, y'all, that's a wrap on today's episode. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like or follow or subscribe. Whatever platform you're on, just hit the button to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. Yep, and please help us grow the channel by sharing it with someone else who might enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.